is a chieftain of one of the hill tribes also known as the Vale Mountain Clans. There are many small clans scattered across the mountains of the moon. The Moon Brothers are one of the larger clans and they are befriended with the Black Ears who live close by. Their worst enemies are the Stone Crows. Many more clans exist, the bigger ones being the Burn Men, the Howlers, the Milk Snakes, the Painted Dogs, the Red Smiths and the Son of the Mists and the Son of the Tree. Now these clans keep trying to attack the Airy, but more than a dozen armies have already been stopped at the Bloody Gate, that's the entrance leading to the Vale. The Vale is also known as the Vale of Arryn. Also, sometimes they are referred as the Wildlings of Westeros and they are descendants from the First Men. Just like many of the surrounding clans, the Moon Brothers stood up against the authority of the Airy. As the Airy had a feudal society, many of the normal folks rejected the joke of the governing elites known as the Highborn. They were forced to swear fealty and had to fight for their lords. Those who were not highborn were small folk, and even small folk who were ascended to nobility were still considered lowborn. Considering that, with exception of some rulers like Stannis Baratheon, most lowborn or small folk couldn't even possibly become a knight or obtain any other nobility only status. So when Catelyn Stark captured Tyrion at the Crossroad Inn, her party is attacked by clansmen of the Vale, thought to be Moon Brothers. And after the trial by combat, Bronn and Tyrion leave the Vale and find themselves surrounded by more clansmen. The Moon Brothers, as well as the Black Ears, the Stone Crows, Burn Men and Painted Dogs were recruited by Tyrion Lannister to fight against the Starks. The promise of weapons and the Vale itself was enough to be a somewhat unruly part of the Lannister army. In that situation, the Moon Brothers were led by Earth. Tywin Lannister had no problem putting those troops in the vanguard of the army, which was the front line. Most of the surviving men are paid off by Tywin to prevent them from going to the capital and return to the Vale. However, some stayed in the Kingswood. When the clansmen refer to Haley's ugliness, it's not that she's actually ugly, but she is too clean and she is too fair to be a proper moon brother. Since the clansmen are often referred as the bearded clansmen of the Vale, it makes it absolutely strange and highly unlikely that, of all people, Haley would ascend to be the leader of a male dominated group of barbarians. Seeing from her description that she's respected for her strength and skill in battle, but whispers behind her back that actually shame her, it all makes it a bit highly unlikely to be a real scenario. Haley has a unique set of specializations, increasing her motivation limit by 6%, which gives her some more energy to fight other rebel leaders. I suppose she does need that to keep the stone crowds away from their camps, but she also increased the wall defense by 50% and infantry attack by 30%, so she is a defensive frontline commander. This also causing her to not be the highest priority to be upgraded, but certainly a decent addition if you want to give yourself a bit of edge in clearing rebel leaders or focus on a strong infantry frontline. Under stat she has almost 50% heal bonus, which makes her a lot better as a primary frontline against rebel leaders in combination with commanders like Jane where she will have enough healing to sustain even against level 5 camps. Due to her lack of crowd control, there are better choices however in the werewolves and the training ground. Her active, Axe of the Chief Test, which was before called Axe of the Chieftain, deals about 3000 damage in a straight line, which is really low in comparison to other commanders. Her Howl of the Moon is pretty strong to absorb some early damage, but control resilience 25% to start is a bit useless, as it takes overall quite some time before the enemy starts using abilities, if not to 15 seconds given for this skill, especially in places like the training rounds. Her damage reflect is a unique and decent skill but horribly underpowered. They can easily make their 100% chance, and she still ends up with low damage output in most scenarios. Her passive, Mountain Spirit, gives her more viability as a tank, which is a very nice skill to have. However, defensively she has the same skills as Chris, but then the weaker version. Like Noble here from Chris gives defense to all guards, while she only gives it to herself. Same as Howl of the Moon, while Chris gains damage reduction for 5 seconds, for every 10 seconds she only gains it once at the start. She could use a minor boost in either crowd control, damage output or a more supportive functionality. Her friendship stats are 3 command and 2 combat and are very low. Her favorite item is food, so despite her stats being low, unless you have Theon, only Russell should be slightly more priority. Underpowered, 
somewhat uninspiring as she looks painfully similar to the wildling girl Ygritte and unlikely lore, but her character model fits nicely into the Game of Thrones universe, be it if she were a wildling from beyond the wall. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video and share to support the channel. Thank you for watching and see you next week.